What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound of Tech once again. Today, I have a review of the Acer XF251Q. It's a 1080p TN 1 millisecond gray to gray 75 hertz monitor, and it's in the budget range, so we're going to talk about it right now. Going over the list of specs, we have a screen size of 24 and a half inches, so a little bit bigger than a 24 inch monitor, of course, uh, hence the 25. I think some people count it as a 25 inch. It's basically the standard size for 1080p that you really want to be going with. Any larger in the pixel density is not quite good. It is full HD, so 1080p. We're not looking at a 1440p or 4K monitor here. And the response time is one milliseconds, which is pretty much the selling point for this monitor in its price range. It has an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. And of course, hence the 1080p resolution, a horizontal viewing angle of 170 degrees, a vertical viewing angle of 160 degrees, LED backlight, and an adjustable display. So the tilt angle is gonna be from negative five degrees to 15 degrees. And it does have an adjustable display height so you can move it up and down. And it does rotate 90 degrees as well so you can put it in either landscape or portrait mode depending on your preference or what you're using it for in particular. So if you got this to game on for now and later you upgrade to something better and you're also a streamer, it could be great to go ahead and rotate to that portrait mode for you to go ahead and like read text chat on Twitch. That's one of the most common uses I see for that orientation of monitors lately. The maximum adjustable height is four and a half inches and it does run between 30 kilohertz and 85 kilohertz with a vertical frequency of 55 hertz to 75 hertz. And that's gonna be an important number to keep in mind here coming up shortly. The standard refresh rate is 75 hertz and it does support FreeSync. Now, with the FreeSync at 75 hertz, you have to keep in mind though, that the FreeSync range is actually only 55 FPS to 75 FPS. So it's not a very large range. It's only about 20 frames per second. And on top of that, it's over HDMI only. This means that the new support for NVIDIA on FreeSync will not work on this monitor at all because that's gonna require DisplayPort for the Team Green. So really what you're looking at here is a Radeon GPU budget monitor, and that's a little unfortunate. I wish it had either a display port, well, not either a display port. I would just wish it had a display port as an option, which it does not have. Now, audio wise, it has two two watt speakers. They're sufficient, um, but you're gonna wanna be using headphones most of the time or another external speaker source. Now, while it doesn't have a display port, it has two HDMI ports. Both of them support FreeSync over it, and it does have a single VGA. Also to keep in mind here, what's great about having the two HDMI ports is you could keep your Xbox FreeSync supported Xbox, there you go, connected as well as your gaming PC. It does have a headphone port, so you can use that and not have to go straight to um, something like your actual PC itself so you can keep your headphones a little bit closer to you if you are still on wired headphones. Now on the power it has a max TDP of 26.6 watts however under load we recorded with the kilowatt it only using about 9.7 to 10 watts. Very very power efficient and I think you know I like to record that just in case you guys are curious. Vase amount, it does support. It's 100 by 100 standard, but it is uh, basically recessed in because of the way they have their stand uh, configured mechanically. So when you take that off, you'll actually see there's a gap. That works for in most cases for vase mounting, but you need to check your vase amount adapter and make sure that it is below that spec because for example, I have some from Amazon over here that if I have a monitor that has a sunken in uh, vase amount, I have to actually get some standoffs or longer screws and some standoffs to bring it up and out. Uh, that actually happened here recently on the Dell monitor that I purchased. So it is vase amount supported, but it is with a stipulation there. 
Now, as far as aesthetic, you're going to have pretty thin bezels with a thicker bezel down on the bottom that includes the Acer logo. It's like a brushed aluminum kind of feel on the front. And then on the right hand side, you'll have your OSDs that are actually on the front of the panel instead of on the bottom, like most cases or most monitors these days have them like on the under lip. Now, the a thing about the actual bezels themselves, there's a little bit of a gap between the actual screen and the bezel that is noticeable, especially when cleaning, which is how I found it because while I was cleaning the monitor for this video, in fact, uh, I was using some display cleaner that does foam up and that foam really, really fell into those cracks and made it very apparent essentially that there was a visible uh, separation between the bezel and the screen panel itself. Now going through the on-screen display, you're gonna have plenty of different options. My favorite is just to go with custom, but I believe you have game one, game two, game three, and then your cinema and so on and so forth for of course all of your presets and then you have the custom preset where you can set your own colors for me in particular i really wanted to set this to play around with the overdrive which i couldn't get working every time i selected it there's no button to move it off of normal and i don't know exactly why that is i must be doing something wrong there so let me know in the comment section below beyond that we did set the brightness to about 16 and i think that really works well in most situations around that 16 to 18 brightness especially with these tn panels seems to feel really really good and the rest of the settings that you're going to have there is some cheater settings like putting on a reticle you dirty bastards only use that in single player include in the box you have a vga cable an hdmi cable and a power cord so you don't have to worry about any of the connectivity all of the connectivity that is advertised the monitor supports it also comes with a cable which is very welcome and the aesthetic like we said has that brush aluminum on the front the only gamer part of it is going to be the base which does have that gamery feel with kind of some sharp edges and so forth and of course if you're going to be face mounting it not that big of a deal but the stand for this price point is one of the best stands around really to come in the box because of all of the motion that it does support so we've pretty much covered everything here if you're on team green i'm going to say avoid this monitor altogether there's no chance of it working uh, for you in particular with the FreeSync uh, compatibility however if you're on team red this monitor is very appealing especially for the price i picked it up for which was about 129 now that was on sale However, for $129, getting a 75 Hertz 1080p monitor with FreeSync capability is pretty much unheard of, especially with a high quality stand like that. Plus the one millisecond response time, it has made it my go-to LAN gaming monitor because, hey, if it breaks out at the LAN center, I'm not that worried about it. Replacing a $130 monitor at least compared to replacing something like my Dell that's closer to five or $600. So that's gonna be my final verdict for this. If you're on Team Red, it's one of the best budget options in the game. If you're on Team Green, I think you're gonna need to look elsewhere primarily because it has no display port input for you to use for the possible FreeSync compatibility, which obviously I can't test. That being said, also keep in mind, if you're on Team Red, what's really cool is the FreeSync is enabled just by plugging it in. It detected it, picked it up, and turned FreeSync on. However, it did not set the refresh rate to 75 hertz. It only set it to 60 hertz, so we had to go into the display properties and set it to 75 hertz. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I will see you next Tuesday.